Yo, what's going on guys? My name is Brent and welcome to part four of my awesome tutorial series, how to create the game Super Mario Brothers. So in this tutorial, we're actually gonna get started on building our game. And the first thing we're gonna start with is the HUD. So this is where we're gonna keep the score, uh, you know, how many lives Mario has, what world we're in and stuff like that. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and stick with me. So to do this, we're actually gonna be using something that libgdx provides us called scene2d.ui. And what this does is it's basically a layout manager for widgets that we can place on our screen. The widgets we're gonna be using are labels and it's basically just plain text that we are going to place strategically on our stage as uh, it's called in uh, scene 2D. Um, and basically we can update those labels when things change, like uh, the, the time, Mario's lives, the world, etc. And so this is all going to create our HUD. So to get started, let's go ahead and go to our main game class, Mario Bros. And here we're gonna create a public final in, or public static final int uh, and we're going to call it the width and that is going to be equal to 400 and then a public static final int v height equal to 208 and these will be our virtual width and virtual height for our game. Now going to our play screen, we're gonna change this, uh, the viewport to our Mario Bros dot V width and Mario Bros dot V height. Now we're gonna go to our main package and create a new package called scenes. So we'll do that. And then inside scenes, we're gonna create a new Java class and call this HUD. And this is where we're gonna create the logic for our HUD. Okay, let's start uh, creating some variables here. The first one we're gonna need is a public stage stage. The next is a private viewport viewport. Uh, we're doing this because um, when our game world moves, we want the HUD to stay the same. So we're going to use a new camera and new viewport specifically for our HUD. So it stays locked there and only renders that part of the screen. And then the world can move around independently on its own. Um, next, we're going to create a private integer for our world timer. And then a private float time count we'll go over this later and a private uh, integer score so now we need to create our widgets which uh, scene 2d calls a label so uh, label count down label and then um, score label and then time label level label oops world label and finally mario label so let's create our constructor so public hud and it's going to take in a sprite batch sb and then we're going to set our world timer to 300 our, um, yeah, we need to bring that in. Um, time count equals zero. Our score equals zero. Then we're gonna create a viewport equals new viewport. Oops, it's gonna be a fit viewport. And it's gonna take in our Mario Bros dot V width in mario bros dot v height and it's going to take in our new orthographic camera and finally we need to set the stage the stage equals new stage um, and it takes in our viewport and our sprite badge so it, it can use the same one. It's not gonna recreate a new sprite batch. Okay, so we need to talk about what a stage is. You can think of a stage as basically an empty box. If we just tried to put um, uh, widgets in there, they would fall, they wouldn't have any kind of organization. 
So in order to provide some sort of organization, we're gonna create a table inside of our stage. Then we can lay out that table in a way uh, to uh, organize our labels in a certain position inside of our stage. So to create a table, we're just gonna say table. Uh, we'll use the scene2d table. Call it table equals new table. And then we're gonna say table dot top. Now this says instead of uh, by default it would align in the center top and uh, or width and height. So right in the center of your uh, stage. But uh, when we say table dot top, it's going to put it at the top of our stage. Next we're going to say uh, table dot set fill parent to true. This means that our table now is the size of our stage. Okay, now to save some time, I've already wrote all of our strings out. Now we just need to define them. So we're gonna create a new label here. The first thing uh, the label takes is the string uh, uh, that's gonna be attached to our label. Now a countdown label will be a string representation of our integer. So to do that, we're gonna do string.format um, and it's gonna take in uh, this, zero, three, that's how many, uh, um, numbers in our uh, countdown timer there will be the D for integer and then this is gonna be the world timer okay and then next it's going to take in a new label dot label style and the first thing in a label style is the bitmap font that we're gonna use we're gonna use the default bitmap font this is different than a regular font this is a graphic version of the font okay um, so new bitmap font and then the next parameter in the label style is color and we're going to use um, the scene the bad logic graphic color and then we're going to say dot white there we go that is our first label now we're going to copy this oops and into our score label our score label will be six digits long. So instead of three, we're gonna have six and it will be the score. And then next we need our time label. Our time label just is the text time. So we don't need the string dot format. We can just write it as a, a string. So it'll be time. And then let's just copy this one down to the level and this is just going to say um let's see it's just going to say one one for now because that's the only level we're going to be creating in this tutorial series the first level so world label will be just say world and mario level or label will just say mario and there we go we've created our labels now we need to add them to our table. So in order to do that, we just say table.add and we can add our labels. So the first one will be our Mario label. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna expand the Mario label the length of our screen. But what happens is if we say expand.x, that extends it to the end of our screen. So the entire top row would be um, the Mario label. But if we have multiple things in a single row that expand X, they all share an equal portion of the screen. So um, if we have three things, that'll each label will take up one third of the width of the screen. So expand X and then we're gonna pad the top uh, 10 pixels, okay? The next will be table dot add uh, world label. And then we're gonna expand dot X that one as well. So now these two labels would take up half the screen each and then pad the top with 10 pixels as well. Next we'll say table dot add and this will be the time label dot expand X and then we'll pad the top with 10 pixels as well. And then now we're gonna create a new row. So that was all the top row. Now in our table, let's create a new row. So table dot row. Everything below this will be on a new row. So table dot add 
um, our score label dot expand x dot that's actually we don't need to pad that anymore um, table dot add level label dot expand x and table dot add countdown label dot expand x now finally we need to add the table to our stage so stage dot add actor our table and there we go okay so now let's go back to our play screen we're going to get rid of this texture because we're no longer going to be using that so let's delete that and also we're going to get rid of this because we don't need to draw that texture anymore right now so what we're going to do is we're going to say um, game dot batch dot set projection matrix. Again, this is what is going to be shown uh, via our camera. We're going to say our HUD, which we're going to define up here. Actually, I've already done that. So I've created a HUD right here. HUD equals new game or new HUD with our game dot batch getting sent to it. So we're going to say HUD dot stage dot get camera dot combined okay i know that's a lot but that's what it is then what we're going to say is hud dot stage dot draw and that is all it's going to take so let's go ahead and hit this run button here we'll see if it looks like a decent hud for mario and there we go we got mario a score the world and the world level that we're on the time and a integer version of time. In our next tutorial, we can talk about adjusting the time and our um, score. So we'll go ahead and cut it there for this video. I greatly apologize for the length. I know this is longer than my typical videos, but we had so much content to pack into one. Uh, but we did actually make a whole lot of progress in our HUD, and now it actually starts to look a little, you know, a teeny bit like Mario. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and post them below. I'm pretty good about getting back to everybody. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. But most importantly, please share it if you do like it. If you're feeling generous, check out my Patreon page. I give you two big thumbs up for that. I appreciate everybody watching and I'll catch you guys next time.